بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we'll talk about Graves disease Our reference is Robin's basic pathology and mechanism of signs and symptoms of, uh, of disease Okay, overview about Graves disease The, the first uh, Graves who discovered the Graves disease describe it as violent and long continued, uh, continued palpitation in females So palpitation it likes symptoms of sympathetic activation and females, it uh, it tells you that uh, this disease uh, came to female, and as we know that it is an autoimmune disease, so most of the autoimmune diseases came to female more than male. In a ratio of seven to one female to male in Graves' disease, and uh, it also come in twenty to forty years at this age. It mostly come in this age. Uh, but it can exist in any age. The characteristics of Graves' disease, it has three main characteristics. One is um, thyrotoxicosis. Thyrotoxicosis is increased level of thyroid hormone T3 and T4 in the circulation as, uh, as a result of diffusely enlarged and hyperfunctioning thyroid. And it almost present in all cases. But the second and third symptoms and uh, signs or characteristic, uh, it does not exist in all patients with Graves' disease. The second one is ophthalmopathy, like isophthalmus and lid lagging symptoms. Uh, it exists in 40% of patients and it is specific for Graves' disease, not, uh, not to all, all of uh, hyperthyroidism um, disorders. The third characteristic is localized infiltrative dermopathy, which is pretibial myxedemia. It came to minority of patients. We will discuss pretibial myxedemia and pathophysiology in next slides. The genetics associated with Graves' disease. So the incidence is increased with relatives of affected patients, and the concordance uh, rate of monozygotic twins is high as 60%. So um, uh, when there is uh, with, between the monozygotic twins, uh, there is high associated with uh, uh, get affected. If there is, if the one person is affected, uh, there is a high incidence to uh, affect uh, the other. So this almost and uh, associated with uh, genetic defects. The genetic defects are HLA DR3, other reference said DR3 and DR5. Uh, polymorphism in genes encoding the inhibitory T cell receptors CTLA4 cytotoxic T cells. Tyrosine phosphatase PTP in 22. So the pathogen the pathogenesis, the main target receptor is TSHR re uh, receptor, which is thyroid stimulatory hormone receptor. Uh, there are three autoantibodies. In Graves' disease, there are three main autoantibodies in this disorder. The first one and the main one, which uh, develop the symptoms of hyperthyroidism, is thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. Uh, as we know, here is the follicular cells, and here is the GS protein. Normally, HS, um, no, sorry. TSH hormone uh, bind to GS protein, then activate adenyl cyclase. Adenyl cyclase uh, produce cyclic AMP and the signaling or cascade complete to the result of uh, synthesis of T3 and T4 and secretion of it. So, um, uh, uh, the thyroid stimulated immunoglobulin uh, do whatever the TSH hormone do, do does. Um, so it, we we can consider it as TSH and like antibody. Uh, and uh, it it is not uh, released from pituitary gland as a physiological TSH. No, it is an antibody. So uh, we can. Um, we can know that uh, TSH antibody, uh, when it uh, rises, uh, there is no negative feedback with uh, T3 and T4, 
there will be an uh, increase uh, releasing of this hormone because um, this uh, this antibody is not like TSH receptor which has negative feedback uh, TSH hormone sorry so uh, this antibody found almost in all persons with with uh, Graves disease okay the second uh, antibody thyroid growth stimulating immune globulins implicated in the proliferation of thyroid follicular epithelium so it is growth and as we know there is a sign of goiter and Graves disease why there is a goiter here is the explanation of this anti antibody uh, growth it stimulates the follicular cells and follicles to growth and hyperplasia increase in uh, number and hypertrophy in size so it produced then goiter the third antibody tsh binding inhibitor immunoglobulins so uh, in some patients with graves disease they uh, develop some episodes of hyper hypothyroidism and that's the cause of it tsh binding inhibitor immunoglobulin develop hyperthyroidism signs symptoms okay now we'll discuss ophthalmopathy pathophysiology First, we have to know that it is a T-cell mediator autoimmune phenomenon. Um, uh, and also, we have to know that in the retroalpitor and extraocular muscles here, there is a TSH receptor. And uh, as we discussed before, there is increased uh, uh, number of TSH receptor antibody are stimulating and growth and inhibitory all these things okay uh, they will bound uh, to TSH receptor here the antibodies and will produce uh, the signs of ophthalmopathy and ophthalmopathy so the volume of the retroorbital connective tissue and extraocular muscles is increased as a result of severe causes we will discuss now the first cause is marked infiltration of retroorbital space by mononuclear cells, mainly T cells. Uh, the second cause, inflammatory edema as a result of this infiltration or and inflammation, edema and swelling of extraocular muscle. Of course, if there is an infiltration and inflammation here, the extraocular muscle will affect it also. Um, the third cause accumulation of extracellular matrix components uh, here as you know uh, that there is a fibrocytes secrete glycose uh, glycose uh, glycose uh, amino glycan uh, as a result of this uh, inflammatory process um, and uh, that's why there is accumulation of extracellular matrix components the fourth cause increased number of adipocytes and uh, is a fatty infiltration. So all of these uh, causes uh, and the changes display the able forward potentially interfering with the function of extraocular muscles. The last topic we'll discuss is pretibial myxidemia pathophysiology. Okay, that's the shape of pretibial myxidemia. We have to know that there is uh, in this site in the tibia there is a TSH receptor, and as we know in the Graves disease there is an antibodies uh, through this receptor and targeting this receptor. Um, this pathophysiology is uh, similar to the ophthalmopathy pathophysiology. We will discuss it um, in brief. So there's immunological and cellular mechan mechanical factors contribute to the production of localized glycosamine glycans um, and over uh, expression of TSH receptor at certain sites which is here and it can also uh, express in all the body but mainly here and in, uh, in the eye. Uh, at certain sites including the pretibial area lead to fibroblast secretion of glycosamine glycans and sequestration of fluid and produce pretibial myxidemia we have uh, to know that myxi means non pitting edema okay and that's uh, to our lesson today Graves disease Thank you very much.